A warm welcome from, from me to, to my presentation about the long and winding road to application logging. My name is Istvan Balog, and uh, I work for SAP in, in Germany, in, in Karlsruhe. Okay, so first uh, let me establish the context uh, of my presentation, and I say a few words about the subcloud platform. You might ask yourself, what can the subcloud platform do for you? And it uh, allows uh, a possibility to quickly extend existing cloud and on-premise applications and supports new kinds of services like IoT. But actually, this is not my area of uh, expertise, and I would like to refer you to the uh, um, expert talk by Bent Kranich, um, which if you have missed, uh, you can check out uh, the recordings on YouTube and also the other talks in this polyglot uh, in-memory track. Recently, um, Björn Gerke, uh, our CTO and uh, Cloud Platform President at SAP, who also gave a keynote here, wrote um, a blog post, a positive sum game, where he summarized um, the innovations regarding the subcloud platform that were announced just about a month ago at the Sapphire Now event in, in Florida. And for, for me personally, one of the biggest, biggest announcements was that the, the Cloud Foundry environment in the subcloud platform is now generally available. And um, if you know the, uh, the design principles of 12-factor apps, you might expect of a cloud platform to provide several services. One of them is the ability to, to collect and aggregate your application logs. And uh, actually, the subcloud platform supports that. If you give it a try and check out the, the cockpit, there's one service in the DevOps category, application logs. And uh, as a Cloud Foundry developer, it works as you would expect it to work. Uh, you can create a, a service instance of, of that service in the Cloud Foundry marketplace. And after pushing your app, you can bind it to that service instance and you can ins inspect your logs um, in, in pre-built, use-case-focused uh, Kibana dashboards. And uh, this was basically the integration. I work uh, in a team at SAP in Karlsruhe, Germany, uh, who is responsible for providing the service. Although I joined the team um, less than a year ago, I'm here to tell you uh, about our two-year-long journey uh, to this a robust and scalable application login gestion pipeline that we have uh, built. More specifically, the focus of my presentation is about the introduction between the Cloud Foundry components uh, for, log, uh, for log, log handling and the login ingestion pipeline. Um, two years ago, uh, we, we leveraged the user provided services and a stream, the streaming feature uh, to, to stream application logs uh, to a third-party log ingestion uh, pipeline. We faced some issues uh, regarding usability. It was uh, not possible to filter application logs based on org, space, or app names. So we moved on to the Logregator Firehose about one and a half years ago. Uh, using the firehose meant uh, instantaneous adoption uh, because uh, the Logregator Firehose component conveys all the logs from all the applications in the given landscape. So it was a good lesson for us to learn to improve the resilience of our stack, um, and especially in large-scale large -scale deployments, um, we, we had to face some challenges. And one of the lessons learned was to introduce quotas and burst limits. And just recently, about half a year ago, we, we figured that we could offer differentiated service levels for application developers. Um, if we use the quotas, um, uh, if we provide different uh, quotas. So first, um, the, in the presentation, I would like to talk about the ingestion pipeline, and then about Logregator and about the three uh, stations al along this road. So an introduction to the ingestion pipeline will follow. 
we are using the, the log search push release uh, provided by the Cloud Foundry community to, to deploy the Elastic Stack uh, in our landscapes uh, with Bosch. The Elastic Stack is composed of the Elastic Search, which is a distributed search engine uh, based on Apache Lucene. Logstash is, the, is a data processing pipeline that you can use to ingest log messages. And Kibana is a visualization platform that allows users to inspect log messages um, which are indexed in the Elastic Stack. The architecture looks as, um, as fo follows, uh, as shown on the diagram. It shows um, the path of the log messages. So the log messages arrive um, at Logstash instances called ingesters, which, um, for, which forward these log messages to a, to a Redis queue as fast as they can, so they, they do not do much processing to avoid um, um, exercising back pressure uh, to the syslog source. On the other side of the Redis queue, the Logstash parser nodes pick up the log messages uh, parse them and um, write them to the uh, Elastic uh, Search data nodes. In front of the Kibana, we have um, an open sourced reverse proxy component uh, called Acker, which uh, allows to do user authentication with the Cloud Foundry UAA component and uh, also restricts um, parts of the Kibana user interface. Um, so for example, our pre-built dashboards and visu visualizations are made read-only. Um, and uh, this component is also responsible for, create, for dynamically creating uh, Elasticsearch aliases to restrict the um, access uh, to the application logs that the application developers are supposed to see in the given orgs and uh, spaces. Okay, so as a next step, let's move on to a short overview about the Logregator subsystem. Maybe you have heard the presentation by Adam Heavener, the PM of the Logregator, so this will be just a short summary compared to them. The Logregator subsystem provides a highly available and secure stream of logs and metrics for user applications and system components. It can stream application logs in the syslog format, and um, that can be forwarded to a third-party component, just as the previously shown Elastic Stack. This is the standard diagram of the Logregator components. I do not intend to go through um, all of the subcomponents, but rather show just uh, the components uh, that matter, that are relevant uh, for, for my talk. So each app is executed in, in app containers, and the collocated Metron agent uh, picks up each, each line in the standard out, standard out and standard error stream of the app, packs it in an envelope, and uh, forwards it to the Doppler servers. The Doppler servers can stream these logs uh, to a syslog train endpoint. So this is one possibility to attach um, an a log, log analysis uh, pipeline. Furthermore, the application logs are collected by the traffic controller components, uh, and together with um, component metrics, they are exposed in the firehose. The firehose WebSocket endpoint streams all uh, the logs from all the applications, and you can use the firehose to syslog nozzle a syslog adapter to filter only for the application logs and uh, forward them in the syslog format to the syslog train endpoint. So here on, in this diagram you can see that if you want to attach your um, elastic stack to the Cloud Foundry Logregator subsystem, you have two possibilities, either the Doppler endpoint or the firehose to syslog. Okay. So about two years ago we, we started with user-provided services. What is a user-provided service? A user-provided service allows um, application developers to use services which are not available in the Cloud Foundry uh, marketplace. And um, it can be used to trigger the streaming of the application logs to a syslog-compatible consumer. 
So in this case, the architecture looks like, like as follows. The stream provided by the Doppler server is conveniently in the syslog format, which can be plugged into um, the entry point of the Elastic stack, stack to the ingestor logstash instances. This configuration is fairly straightforward, and it helped us two years ago to, to start fast and offer our service internally after a short development cycle. The documentation in the Cloud Foundry um, web, website is quite clear, and I just have this slide because one of my colleagues um, took the Cloud Foundry certification exam recently, and he said that one of the 19 questions uh, he faced was just about this question, so how to use user-provided services to forward uh, the syslog um, uh, to, to, an entry, uh, to, a, to a syslog train. So how would you do it? Um, you can create a user-provided service and specify the syslog train endpoint with the minus L uh, option. And after you bind your service instance uh, to, to your app, then the logs start to flow and can be inspected in Kibana. Um, if you are not so familiar with the syslog uh, structure, I think it is kind, kind of instructive to to dump these syslog messages to standard out and inspect them with, with a TCP server implementation like this in Ruby. And if you, if you did that today, uh, then um, you would see something like this. So the message length, the priority, the version, the date. And as you can see here in the hostname field of the syslog um, um, field, uh, we can see the concatenation of the org space and application name. This is actually a recent improvement in the syslog uh, format, but unfortunately due to the limitations of the syslog um, protocol and the hostname field, it is not guaranteed that the application org space names are represented as they were specified by the application developer. So we hope that maybe in the future the the better suited um, structured data field in the syslog protocol uh, could be used for that. So this um, brings me to the, to the topic that we faced two years ago. This is a screenshot from early 2015 from our first dashboard. Where if you look close, closely, you can see that um, in the search field, we have app GUIDs because at that time, the log messages lack the human readable metadata like app name, org name, and space name. So we had to use a workaround to, to fetch this metadata periodically from the cloud controller and, and create um, links in a portal app uh, which, uh, with, with, uh, with pre, uh, prepared filters in Kibana so that application developers can, can see the logs for the given application. And this was the usability issue that motivated us to try um, the other approach, the firehose endpoint, to be able to show, to be able to drill down to application logs uh, using orgs, uh, space, and app names. So about one and a half years ago, uh, we started to use the logregator firehose. In that case, the architecture diagram looks like this. So the first part is the same, and the log messages are collected by the traffic controller. The firehose to syslog nozzle uh, filters um, out the container matrix, and the application logs are forwarded in the syslog format uh, to the entry point of our stack. Um, otherwise, uh, it is the same. So there's one convenient feature of the firehose to syslog nozzle, uh, that it talks to the cloud controller and it fetches uh, the metadata I was talking about, the uh, org space and app name. And it annotates each log message um, with, with that metadata. So um, uh, note that also the, the Firehost to Syslog nozzle uses a, a local uh, database to store uh, this, this metadata which proved very valuable for us because whenever the 
the Firehose syslog nozzle was restarted or had to be restarted for, for a reason. Um, fetching all those metadata for thousands of apps could take considerable amount of time, so it is uh, better to, to re reload that information uh, from, from the disk. So with that, we could realize uh, dashboards where users could drill down to organizations and human readable names um, could be used. Using the firehose also meant instantaneous mass adoption because the firehose conveys the application logs of all the apps. And um, it was a very variable experience for us, like, kind of like a constant load test, uh, and it helped us to understand the weak spots of our stack and uh, strengthen those. So, what are the lessons that we learned uh, from, from using the firehose in production um, large-scale deployments? So first, keep an eye on the log format changes in the uh, Cloud Foundry platform. So like the Go, Go router uh, logs um, have changed uh, several times, so using integration tests um, helps to, to track these changes. Um, also, we, we had to uh, re, uh, purposefully re reduce the maximum message size to, to protect the stack. In the Elasticsearch, there's a concept of field type mappings, and um, we figured that if the log uh, documents used field types which were incompatible, then it, um, it could cause errors in the logstash parsers, which could even fill up the disks. So it was necessary to, to configure the field type mappings in a way that uh, they ignored um, incorrectly typed values. Uh, furthermore, we have, I will show it later, a, a set of pre-built dashboards to keep the elastic search aggregations working. We actually had to um, make sure that the log um, fields um, are of, of the given type as we expect them. So if, if we expect a string or if Elasticsearch expect a string, it has to be a string. If we expect a number, it has to be a number. Also, we, uh, first we uh, su uh, supported parsing um, arbitrary application logs if they were formatted in JSON. But um, as we had issues with these Elasticsearch mappings, we, um, we limited um, application log parsing to, to application logs that were written with our logging libraries. Which brings me to mentioning that we uh, have open source logging libraries in, in Java and in uh, JavaScript for Node.js, which help you to um, write structured uh, logs as JSON documents. We also faced the issue that there were some chatty apps, typically apps that were not using those logging libraries and were producing exception stack traces in a tight loop. And without logging libraries, an exception stack trace can, can uh, contain a couple of hundred lines, which all um, are interpreted as uh, separate log messages. So we could we had cases where uh, we had um, thousands of logs per second, which were actually only garbage. So we came to the conclusion that to protect our stack, we should throttle these uh, chatty apps, and we introduced quotas. So what are quotas? Quotas are just rate limiting, so that apps are allowed to log only a certain amount, certain number of logs per second or uh, per longer uh, interval. And if, if apps uh, would log more, then we intentionally do drop those log messages uh, at the entry point of uh, the pipeline. And to um, create a feedback loop for application developers, we emit um, artificial messages which conveys this information, and it can be shown in a, in a dashboard that for a given app, so many logs were processed by us and so many logs were dropped by us. So please, application developers, check your logs if they really make sense for you. Uh, otherwise, uh, fix the application. So this was a measure to, to protect our, 
our stack. But later, after we had an, um, a stable um, implementation of, of the quota tracking, we figured that, that this, this fe feature could also be sold as a new feature, and we could um, um, offer differentiated service levels by, di by offering uh, different quotas. And uh, another aspect was the retention period for logs. Uh, so what we actually wanted to do is um, um, offer in the Cloud Foundry Marketplace a logging service with different service plans, and each service plan uh, could um, was a combination of different um, quotas and uh, retention periods. And we couldn't easily do that with um, the Firehose approach. So yet again, we, we did something different. And uh, this is what we call Sleeve, the syslog forwarder service. So in this case, the architecture looks like this. So instead of using the Firehose, we, we consume the, the syslog train from the Doppler servers only for the specific apps that the user uh, bound uh, his app to our service instance. And there we have a forwarder component and a service broker component. And when the, the, when the user creates a service via the cloud controller, then and, and it later binds a service instance um, of our service uh, to an app, the service broker returns a, a syslog train URL which points to our forwarder instance so that the Doppler can, in, so that the cloud controller can instruct the Doppler to forward the logs uh, to our forwarder endpoint. And the service broker also informs the, the forwarder instance that there is a new binding so that when it receives logs um, uh, corresponding to that binding, uh, it, can, it can track the quota usage according to the service plan and it can also tag the log messages so that farther down the pipeline, we can decide to, to write the log messages to one or to another Elasticsearch index, thereby um, offering the possibility to have different retention periods. So this is well known for Cloud Foundry developers. If you check the, the available services in the marketplace, then we have this application logs service, currently with the light plan, which is available for um, every trial user. And for production deployments, we would have um, different plans. And after you create a service instance of that, you can bind your service, and then the, the logs uh, start to flow uh, with different quotas according to the plan, and also with different retention periods. So I I still have some, some time, so I can show you some of the de pre-built dashboards that we have, which are based on the structured logs. So this is the overview dashboard, which helps to understand the evolution of logs and basic KPIs, like um, the number of failures or maximum response time. Uh, another dashboard, and you can notice that um, in the lower part of the dashboard, you can always drill down to, to the org and space and, and apps. So on this network and load dashboard, uh, you can see the distribution of the payload sizes. Probably this dashboard is the most useful if you want to track down uh, errors in, in the application because it, it shows the uh, performance issues um, with, uh, with the response, maximum response time distribution and uh, also the, the number of um, different HTTP status codes uh, that are returned. And if you have such a long um, running um, request, then you can use the correlation IDs to, to drill down on that request. And here you, then you can have the um, application and the request logs and you can further investigate what went wrong in the application. So uh, with this solution, so what, what did I walk you through? So in the past two years, we, we started using the user-provided service 
and the, the application log streaming capability of, of Logregator. This helped us to start fast, um, but we were missing these, these metadata I was talking about. Using the Logregator Firehose, we had the metadata, but we had all the logs and we faced issues in large scale deployments. And um, we also were not, so, not able to offer distinguished services. Um, so, so now we went back to the uh, syslog train uh, feature and uh, of created uh, service brokers and a forwarder component to, to, offer an, to offer differentiated services. So maybe what are the takeaways that you could remember from this presentation? To have useful dashboards, you need structured log messages. And I suggest to, to, to go and check out our open source logging libraries in Java and JavaScript, uh, which, uh, for example, help you to, uh, to write exception stack traces in a single line so that they don't end up as separate log messages. To improve the resilience of, of the pipeline, we, we figured that it is necessary to, to introduce quotas, so to check um, and, and, and rate limit what, what the applications can do, and also provide feedback for application developers why are their logs missing. And um, so then you might ask, so what is the, how should we set the quotas? And our answer to that is that let the customer decide and offer multiple combinations of, of quotas and, and retention periods in form of service plans, uh, which can then be selected uh, by the, the user. So this is my, my walkthrough of the of, of our history regarding providing a scalable and robust application logging pipeline. If, if you have questions, feel free to ask now or also offline. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Okay, so there is one question. Uh, we we drop these logs, and what we do is, as I so, sorry. So we just a sec. So we provide um, a da dashboard for application developers and tell them that. Um, you log too much, and normally it is the case when um, when something goes wrong in the application. So in production deployments, uh, we haven't had that, but if, if the application is in a very fa early phase of development and something is just plain wrong and it is constantly throwing exceptions, then uh, this is where we end up. But we try to scale the quotas in, in a way that um, um, the normal usage is uh, supported. Yes, there's another question. So two questions. If you're dropping logs and you're dropping exceptions, uh, as a user, how do I how do I diagnose my problem if my exceptions are falling on the floor? Um, in this case, the log is dropped, so you can't, can't see the exception. But probably you have seen we have you have already had like hundreds of exceptions of the of the same type uh, that you can uh, diagnose. So uh, so this was like. Um, um, self, um, this is the way how we protected the stack uh, currently. Because what we've seen is that this affects mostly apps uh, which are producing logs which are garbage. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. the second question. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes, this logging library that I mentioned is, um, is actually formatting the log message. It's a single line JSON document where the stack trace is just written as an, as an array. But if you don't use the logging library, then, then you end up having several log messages for, for the stack trace, which we want, wanted to avoid. This is why it is part of the documentation of the subcloud platform to use, use these uh, logging libraries. Yes? 
there are no more questions. Oh, there is one more question. So for application logs, this is um, besides CF logs, which they can, of course, use. Um, this is the offering that, that we have currently on the cloud platform. OK. That's all. Um, I mean, so we, what we get is uh, all the logs that the, the log regator subsystem is uh, um, providing us. So we have the logs also from, from the router. We have a separate stack for the platform logs, but generally if, um, if the application crashes, I think um, we, we wouldn't have those logs, I mean, after it crashed, but... Um, so I, I'm not, not so sure about that at the moment. Okay. So thank you very much. That's it. Mm -hmm.